extensively about this. I always wonder, you know, you all the, you always have those crackers or, you know, uh, more harmless, you know, hackers or whatever you want to call them. But usually they don't do anything too harmful. I think they just look for some fun and mm. for some uh, display of power, you know, acting as they get into the Pentagon and look around their files. And usually they have these uh, defense. Once they get caught, it's just like, you know, I'm... Um, have some mental issues, and, uh, oh, and um, in this case, it's... Uh, okay, Gary, uh, Mr. McKinnon was, yeah. um, I believe it was confirmed by a doctor, but he was on the autistic spectrum, and he suffered with As he suffers with Asperger's syndrome, um, which uh, makes it all a little more sad, because uh, obviously I don't believe he was fully aware of what uh, the potential consequences of his actions could be. But on top of that, if we are going to send this person to court, and we do believe being autistic and looking for aliens is a criminal offence which should be punished most harshly. I believe he should be punished or tried in a British court. Uh, not in an American court, because after all, the offence was committed on British soil, albeit digitally he was over in the States. So anyway, that's, a, that's probably sidetracked the whole thing, but I mean, I was yeah, interested in your it, take. It's quite a big um, yeah. I've, I've and been, I was, I'm being partly, uh, partly sarcastic at times. Uh, you know, I say, so I say, he says something like aliens, and I'm just making fun. Because, you know, they have the word for aliens, a person who comes from another state and stuff like that. And, and and also kind of, you know, the whole thing about aliens, it's just like a nice story of like, you know, he's just like, uh, just, you know, I'm just a little bit skeptical about the defense, because I know the defense will try to make it seem like he was just like this boy, you know, trying to find aliens and uh, and because it, it works, it's just it's just the right. You know, they have to try and have him acquitted and and stay in the UK. But, so but then again, yeah, we we've seen the the vigor that uh, the FBI and uh, UK agencies work together in order to get prosecution. And if there was anything more to this case than looking for aliens, I'm sure it would have been pushed into the public uh, yeah. eye because it's it's a great tool to say, well, look, we're in the right. We would like to extradite him, and this is the reason why. At the moment, all they can provide is that he was, you know. They, they can't argue with the fact he was looking for aliens. Nobody's turned around and said, oh, he was trying to access the, the launch codes of a missile or something like that. Um, so at the end of the day, you know, it, it's a very tragic story on taken on face value. And of course, that's if Mr. McKinnon is guilty of this offence at all. And it may well be that he's not. And uh, there's more to the story than meets the eye. Yeah, but sticking with the... Story. Yeah. It's Sticking a very with the ethos, issue, so, like, yeah. the, uh, like uh, Julian Assange is a very similar situation. It's very politicised in both mm. cases, uh, so yeah, uh, we'll it, 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 it's very interesting though the the ethos of of what we're talking about here, which is the ability to or the attempt to extradite somebody to another country for committing an alleged cybercrime in this country. And I didn't know if it's something you had an opinion of. I mean, my my opinion, which I'll say now, Roy, and you can obviously put your ten p in afterwards, would be that anybody who's guilty of a of a computer crime offence, regardless of the country that it is affected or been digitally committed in, the country of origin, the country which the attacker or whatever has been initiated in, should be the country in which he's tried. Uh, I don't believe it's fair that we would, for due process, that we would send a computer hacker who hacked a computer in America over to America. I don't believe in the case of copyright that yeah. we should be... But, but, but that's the United States. I mean, obviously, if it was something like China, uh, asking, you know, saying something like one of the bloggers in the UK is writing things about the Chinese government. Mm -hmm. They aren't too happy about it. That obviously, you you won't send him there. Uh, it's just it's a very political issue. It 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 just is. Uh, they it's not really about what's true, and uh, it's more to do. And you know, they send all these treaties as well. So well, okay. So well, the, uh, they they can do embargoes, and 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 if you look at the well, treaties, they allow these things to happen. Well, let's pin it down. I'll I'll give a straight answer. My answer in question: Do we extradite people committing? computer crime offences, alleged computer crime offences in this country, in another country, do we extradite them to the country of the of the alleged crime? No, we don't. Roy, yes or no? Uh, it depends on the UK law. <laughs> no, no, listen. Listen, it's... Uh, does the UK law make it a uh, violation if he had penetrated the MI6 or something? Would this be a uh, computer crime? Well, it would fall under the Computer Misuse Act just the same way. Because we live in a very hypocritical world where people will only allow a person in their country to be punished if based on their own standards it is illegal. So in this country, if I was to uh, find a person uh, taking a dog in the streets and making a meal out of the dog, uh, in this country it would be like, you know, very, very serious offense. So for many reasons, even the public would be appalled by that. But in other countries it might be quite normal. 
So it depends what the uh, no, it's true. It's mm. I, I hear it, uh, and, and this is actually things. These are things that actually happen. Actually, I heard a story about people, a person who did that, and then the person whose dog was eaten basically came came with a shotgun and sh- killed the guy. And then there was the question, you know, could he, you know, should we actually give him some uh, sympathy for the fact that his dog was basically murdered and stuff? But uh, the so, so so if the UK has a very similar law to the United States, and there is this kind of implicit assumption that when one commits a crime in one country, you can just pass it to the court system that's kind of going to give uh, equal justice or similar justice to the same person. But if it's a, a place that kills for something like homosexuality or for something like not believing in a, you know, for apostasy or something like that, then, then we, we tend to view the things by, by, by certain... Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm pleased I'm pleased you brought that up, actually, because it does highlight two other quick points I want to make. And there's no... I, I don't intend this uh, to be a debate. Just a couple of points I would uh, like people to consider when wondering if extradition to the, uh, the country of the digital crime is uh, considered appropriate and fair. Um, but first of all, before I do that, I'd just like you to consider this scenario. If you have a sniper rifle and you were standing on one American state and you just shoot somebody in another American state with that sniper rifle, where would you commit the offence? And where would you be tried? And this is a sort of ambiguity. Now, I don't know American law, and there, there probably is an answer for that, which is very, very simple, um, but I, I don't know American law at all. But it's just an example of how it makes the this whole issue. Well, they have borders, actually. Uh, well, yeah, I, mean, I, I think that's... Uh, yeah. I, I don't I mean, think they mark the state's borders to the... like. When you talk about distances like sniper knives, I, I don't think it's... Uh, okay, well, it's hypothetical. So, so, so equally, you could say there is a crime committed somewhere around the border, and then there is a dispute about, like, you know, 10 meters away, 10 meters, you know. Um, I mean, it's, just, it's just one of those food for thought. But if we start going down this route that if I commit, say, say in this case, a copyright offense by having a .com domain, um, which is hosting copyright material, and uh, the U.S. is able to extradite me or somebody who does that over to um, over to America. How would that work in other countries that wanted a similar law? Because in other countries we have laws that are quite uh, that we would consider quite harsh. There's some countries which would consider homosexuality and the promotion of homosexuality, for example, a crime. Now, if I had a domain in those countries and I was to write something that was favourable and promoting yet yeah, celebrating homosexuality. Would I be committing the crime then in the same way that the U.S. wants to make this copyright an offence, and would I then expect to be extradited well, to that? Remember country? who owns the internet. Yeah. So that, that's the other thing. It's, um, it, uh, the reason, the reason, the reason why I bring it up. I mean, this is all sorts of whys and wherefores and very far fetched, but it does set a worrying trend, and this is what the whole point of me highlighting this was. It's not so much what might happen or what could happen or what is going to happen, but it does start setting a worrying trend, and it throws in all these little grey areas that. Nobody's properly considered when we're looking at such this type of news where US is calling for extradition of UK pirates. So it's just something to think about. Um, probably I've spent more time on it than I originally intended, and it's probably one that's better suited for putting down onto text. But uh, I just thought I'd bring it up and uh, food for thought, as it were, before we move on to the first track of the evening. Now, Roy, if you've got nothing else to add, um, I will stick the first track on and I'm just getting up the details on it because I apologise my link went down right this is uh, from the album Portrait of Extinction and it's by the band called Cynicism I apologise but you know my musical tastes and it's quite heavy um, this particular track's called Demon Ridden and I'd like to compare it to a mainstream band so people can get an idea of what they're about to hear but because I can't basically I'm going to just play the track I hope you like it if you don't you can always fast forward and we'll see you after after this music break 